Hi everyone, my name is Emily Weimert. I am a Goji Nations missionary currently living in the Philippines with my family of eight. I want to tell you a story, a little bit about how we got here, but also about God's faithfulness through all of it. We've been here for about three years. Our journey started back in 2002 when my husband and I were in college. So my second year of college at this point, and he was planning this trip, uh, really wanted to go. I had actually taken a sign language class that summer before the trip, and I didn't really realize how it was going to play in, but lo and behold, uh, the two-week trip turned into an all-summer trip. So while we were there, um, through the summer trip that turned into a long summer trip, uh, we visited an adult orphanage um, as we were traveling, and I noticed there was a teenager there, which was not typical for an adult orphanage. Usually it's elderly, um, and then some handicap. And so I asked about him, and they informed me that he was deaf. And so it was a great opportunity for me to go practice what I had just learned that summer before. Um, as I approached him and introduced myself, he got so excited, and he just lit up. His eyes were so just full of excitement to see me and to see that I was trying to communicate with him in his language. He continued to inform me about his life before and how he was new there. And he was about 15 years old, if I can remember correctly. He was so, yeah, he was so excited about how I could speak with him or I was willing to speak with him in his language. And that just really penetrated my heart as he told me his story and as he told me what he'd gone through and how he'd been um, abused because he couldn't communicate. And so it was really amazing to see how excited he was and how, uh, what an impact just, just that whole simple conversation was in his life. And he wouldn't know what an impact it made on me. I don't know if he'll ever know. But as we left there, I've, I've never seen him again. I, wouldn't even be able to find him again, but God just really kept that on my heart. He kept that, the, the awareness of what it's like for someone who can't communicate. He kept, you know, that need on my heart. So as the summer ended, we had to go back to America and uh, continue our lives. Jeff and I got married. Um, we, started, we started our lives together, but the Philippines and that experience with this little boy, along with many others, but this particular experience for me really set, set me on fire for, for a passion for the deaf, a passion to want to learn sign language, a passion to want to help. And so I continued to pray, um, even as the years went on, I continued to pray that the Lord would connect me to the deaf community, that he would connect me to a deaf friend, that whatever it took, to help me grow in that area because it was it was still there. I still had that fire, still had that desire. It never left. So a few years later, I found out that there was a church with a deaf program in my county. So I really was excited to go and to get connected there and to learn. I thought it was my answer to prayer. Um, I started going every week and I, it was really exciting. I was learning. And one day, um, the deaf ministry there decided that they wanted to be an exclusively deaf ministry. So I was, I, as far as I know, I was the only person that was not deaf. That was, and besides the interpreters, I was, that was trying to learn and really get in. And so I was approached about not continuing to come uh, because they wanted something exclusive. And it was very hard and heartbreaking for me. Um, but later as, as I reflect and I realize I, I, I thought that was my chance, I thought that was my answer to prayer, but it really wasn't. It wasn't what God had for me. Well, Thirteen years later, God started stirring and moving our hearts to go back to the Philippines to be missionaries. So we packed up everything um, with a different ministry in our mind. Uh, Deaf Missions was not on my mind at that point. We had other plans. We packed up, we planted here, and God just strategically placed us in the, in the right church and in the right location. And as we got to know our church and got to know the Compassion Program at our church, um, we found out that there was a deaf 
child in our compassion program at church. So I was excited to meet her and see what was going on with her and uh, what was happening. And they took me to her classroom and she was of course very shy. Um, I started speaking with her in sign language and it was so cute because once she warmed up to me, she started asking me, the first thing she asked me was, what are my classmates' names and what are their ages? And that might seem simple, but you have to realize that she had been with those, those kids for about three years. And she had been with the same kids, and they were all her same age, and she had no idea what their names were or even what their ages were. So that was really shocking for me. That was really uh, kind of shook me <laughs> a little bit um, and brought me back to where I was in 2002 with that young boy and what he was going through. But then I was helpless. I couldn't do anything about it. And now God had put me here. I had given up my life and everything in it from the past. He put me here to live for Him and everything in me was ready for that, but I was not even thinking, was nowhere near deaf ministry at this point. But he just showed me how faithful he was. I had prayed for 13 years for a deaf ministry, to get into a deaf ministry, to have, you know, something like that, to learn, to grow, and to really do whatever I can to help. And how he does things, he, the way he just does it, because he is God and he is faithful and he is listening and he is hearing every single prayer that I pray for 13 years. And even when I wasn't expecting it or I wasn't even um, in that mode or in that thought at that point, he put me there and he said, here it is, 13 years later, this is me answering your prayer. Finally, I'm answering your prayer. And it doesn't just stop there. The, where he put us in this city of half a million people, um, I go down the street to the gas station and, and fill up my car, and there are deaf people there. I, now I have friends there I get to communicate with and interact with. I go to my local grocery store, <laughs> and I have deaf friends there that I get to talk with and interact with. And it just really is a testimony of how faithful he is and how good he is. And even though it took 13 years to answer that prayer and to answer that cry, and it took a heartache and it took a disappointment, and there was a lot of turns here and there that I tried to do and push and uh, search for, that in all of those things, he had a plan and he was molding it and he was preparing me for it and he was preparing me to get here and to this place and this time and this ministry and for these people and these kids. So that's the start. That's the kind of the story, the back story of how um, we are now. Um, our deaf ministry is growing um, and God is just bringing kids and he's um, opening up doors and he's providing finances and it's just a beautiful thing to be here and to be living for him, giving everything for him and reaching out to these people group, this this definitely unreached people group. Pray for me. I'm really excited to get into this and really share the word of God and, and um, be able to teach sign language and communication with children, with families. And I just want to let you know that no matter how long it takes, don't give up. Don't give up. God is hearing you. He's listening. He, he, he's going to do it. As long as we're giving it to Him and as long as we're seeking Him, as long as we're um, asking Him to come to bless, to uh, minister, whatever it may be, He's listening. He's here. He's building a, a memorial, an altar before the Lord. And... Even though some of our prayers take a long time for us to see that, um, to see an answer to that prayer, it, it doesn't matter because He has His perfect time, His perfect way, His perfect um, way of doing things. So I just want to let you guys know today, don't give up. Don't give up. Sometimes things take a long time. We don't know what He has planned for us, but it is bigger and greater and more beautiful than we can ever imagine.